Hi Church and welcome to another 5 Minutes to Connect. Today I want to talk to you about anger. It's not a very nice subject but the reality is it's something we've all either experienced uh, from other people towards us or perhaps maybe even ourselves towards others or to situations. In the last year, watching the news, we've seen how much anger there is in the world, whether it's in people's response to COVID uh, legislations and policies that have affected people's lives, or maybe even in the last recent months in America with the political result and the anger against, uh, against some of those decisions that have been made. Anger is a real issue and it's, it's not nice. Let's be frank, anger is not a good thing. Or is it? Is it okay sometimes to be angry? And how do we know the difference? What about Jesus himself? What about Jesus when he went into the temple and he saw that they turned it into a house or a den of robbers, as he described it, because they were using it as a selling house, as a marketplace rather than the house of God. And he turned the tables over in anger. So is it okay to be angry when there's an injustice. And how do we know what injustice is okay to be angry about and, and what's not? Well, to help us look at this, uh, we're going to turn to the account of Jonah today. I think it's going to really help us to understand um, the, the root, really, of anger and how we deal with uh, the wrong type of anger, not righteous anger. The account of Jonah is a really interesting one, and I'm sure you know the story well. Jonah in the belly of a fish for three, three days, but there's more to the story than that. You see, Jonah is a prophet, and as a prophet, he's given words by God to usually go and deliver to, uh, to people, uh, specific people that God wants him to talk to, usually who God wants to turn from their wickedness towards him, himself. Um, and in this case, he's told, Jonah's told by God to go to Nineveh, to the Assyrians, and Jonah doesn't want to go. As a matter of fact, he gets down to the port, he looks towards Nineveh, and he thinks, now I'll go the completely opposite direction to Tarshish. So he gets on a boat, as we know, then a storm rises up, and all the, his shipmates are going, hey, what's going on? They work out Jonah's disobeyed God, so they throw him overboard into the sea. At which point, Jonah is eaten by a big fish. He's in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, and eventually is vomited onto the shore, not far from Nineveh. Now what happens in those three days for Jonah in the belly of the fish it probably got him to the point where he realised it, it was good, wasn't good to perhaps question God or to disobey God actually is probably uh, more the case. And, and so he goes and he delivers the message to the Assyrians but he's still angry. He's still angry. As a matter of fact we see how angry he is and really the root of this anger when he's up on the mountain seeing uh, the, the 120,000 Assyrians respond to the message that he brought and they repent, they repent from their wickedness. And up on this mountain, Jonah says to God, I knew this was going to happen. This is why I didn't want to come. I knew that you were a gracious and merciful God. Right there we see the heart of Jonah. Jonah's sense of justice for these Assyrians was that God should wipe them out, that he shouldn't be gracious and merciful towards them. You see, Jonah had been personally impacted by the Assyrians. The Assyrians were a conquering nation and they conquered his tribe, his land, and he was personally affected by that. We might respond in a very similar way to Jonah if we were asked to go to an enemy nation that had impacted our whole way of living. We might feel that actually the justice they deserve is one where, yeah, they should pay for their, their crimes. But here's the thing. You and I are not really just people. There is only one just judge, and that is God himself. Judgment, it says, is reserved for God and God alone. Why? Because he is righteous. He is just in his ways. He looks at people and he works out what they deserve. And really what we all deserve is what Jonah himself wanted for these people to be wiped out. For our own wickedness, we deserve to be wiped out. 
Jonah probably wasn't perfect either. Jonah probably had done things wrong. And it tells us that the punishment for our, our sin is death. That's what we deserve. That's the justice we deserve. That God hates sin. He truly hates sin. And what we deserve is to have ourself die because of the sin that we, we do. But just as Jonah knew God, we know God, that he's a gracious and merciful God. And we know it firsthand because we've experienced it. We've experienced the love of the father that would send his son in the world, into the world to take on our punishment. That he died in our place so that we might never die. Wow. God shows us forgiveness. And in doing that, the judgment that we deserve, the justice that we should have received, we no longer will receive. The real issue for Jonah and the real issue for you and I, when we become angry, angry is just an emotion. But the root of that anger is usually the fact that we think we know best. We think we know how people should be treated for the way in which they've treated us. We think we know best. And really, what is that? That's pride. And out of pride comes a whole manner of horrible things, unforgiveness. In my life, when I think about being the most angry I've been, it was probably towards my dad. Why? Because as far as I'm concerned, he'd done horrible things to me, unjust things to me. But there came a time where I realised that I was harbouring unforgiveness towards my dad. That I thought, felt he deserved to be punished. And then God reminded me that I was no different before I knew Jesus. And that allowed me to go through a process where I started to ask God, well, what's your heart for my dad? And his heart for my dad was exactly the same as his heart was for me when I was in my wickedness. Same heart that God showed to the Assyrians in their wickedness. And that allowed me to stop seeking for it to be my way and start seeking to partner with God and his way. And I chose to forgive my dad. And as a result, we ha had an amazing relationship before he passed away. I'm so thankful for that. And so as we think about anger, let's think about well, what might be the root behind that. As we move down from the expression of anger to perhaps it's unforgiveness, we might actually find we get to the root of it is really pride and that we think we know best. God knew best. That's why he asked Jonah to go. And God knows best for those difficult situations we find and get angry about. And we need to trust him in that. You know, it talks about in the Bible that one day every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. And there's a time where all those tears will be wiped away, where all wickedness will be wiped from the earth. God is a redeeming God. He's a rescuing God. He's a gracious God and he's a healing God. And he's calling us to partner with him. And so if you're struggling in, struggling with anger, I, I would actually plead you to ask God to give you his heart for that situation and allow him to come and do a work in you. You see, anger is a rotten fruit with its roots right there in thinking that we know best. When we switch that around and we let God decide what's best, he starts to produce good fruit, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. So let's be those who seek first his kingdom, to seek first his heart and allow that anger to be turned to the opposite, love. I really hope that this message blesses you as you listen and as you lay down that, that anger before God and ask him for his heart, that you would see real transformation in your life. Be blessed this day.